This is Kelly Hill, Executive Editor of RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Steve Berry, who is President and CEO of CCA. How are you today, Steve? Just fine, Kelly. Thank you for having me. And as I uh, should say, thank you for being a media partner uh, with CCA and our upcoming show, the Mobile Carrier Show, on March 30th through 31st. Great. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. What's on the agenda? Oh, we have uh, <clears throat> tons of things to talk about, and we have a phenomenal lineup of speakers. We're going to start out with our uh, policymakers uh, from Washington, D.C. We're going to have uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers, who is the ranking member uh, on the uh, House Energy and Commerce Committee. Then we'll have Chairman uh, Doyle, who is the chairman of the Telecom Subcommittee uh, of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And of course, we have the FCC represented by Brendan Carr. He's going to give a, a keynote address. And then we're going to have some really uh, phenomenal speakers from uh, all of our uh, our our uh, pinnacle sponsors. I mean, we have <clears throat> Ericsson. Uh, our pinnacle sponsors are Ericsson, uh, Nokia, Interop Technologies, T-Mobile, Mavenir, and uh, TNS, which is uh, uh, one of our uh, longtime members also. And, and almost all of these are on the board. So we, we've got a really great uh, content lineup uh, uh, uh lined up and and we're going to have um 18 19 of our carriers are going to be sponsors of the event so not only are you going to see um, the associate members and and all those that provide the ecosystem for the wireless uh, uh industry but you're also going to see a lot of our carriers not only sponsor but show up and and speak uh on the panels um, hopefully we're going to have a real opportunity you know, on this new virtual platform <clears throat> to interact with our, um, with all our participants. And, you know, we're going to do something a little different this time. Uh, we're going to, uh, in the spirit of the competitiveness uh, of CCA, uh, we're going to have a, uh, an opportunity for people to win money. All you have to do is go to the exhibits and go to the exhibit booths, uh, talk to the exhibitors, you earn points, <clears throat> you get a thousand points, you get a shot at a thousand dollars. Uh, we're also going to do three other drawings that once you get that thousand points, you can also be in a drawing for a hundred dollar, uh, you know, gift certificate. So the, the idea is that's mix it up a little. That's uh, let everyone talk uh, to one another. I know we can't <clears throat> shake hands and be there in person, uh, which we will miss seeing you there, but uh, we'll see you. And, and others uh, virtually, and hopefully this will have an opportunity. We're going to do a speed dating uh, process, a speed networking, I guess you should say. So uh, we're trying to uh, do the best we can and learn from our last virtual show on how we could improve the experience for everyone joining us. So yeah, I'm looking very, very much forward to it. Our content uh, is probably one of the strongest we've had in a long time. And you know, it's interesting that the last virtual show we had, we had the largest number of people that had ever attended a CCA show. And I, we're on track to do the same thing this time. And, you know, it's hard to beat free, I must admit. <laughs> uh, That's true. But uh, I, I think the content, uh, especially, you know, we, we're going to hit all the policy issues and we can talk about some of those uh, coming up. I'm uh, you know, all the issues that are near and dear to the wireless carrier's heart right now is, you know, 5G, uh, ORAN uh, technology. And one of the things that's going to be interesting is everything has been impacted by COVID. And so we're going to have, um, it actually, it's, uh, I'll, I'll show this, the voice, <clears throat> the voice comes out before ever show. And so this is a hard copy of the voice. It's also on our website, but one of the uh, highlighted sections here is, Reimagining, reimagining extraordinary customer care amid the pandemic. So we're going to have several panels on that and how it changed people's thought process and delivery of services uh, in the pandemic. So uh, hopefully lessons and best practices for everyone to to pursue. So that <clears throat> that's sort of the the outline of the okay. show. Uh, obviously, we will hit our big policy issues which uh, you may want to talk about. I mean, you have the, you know, the funds, the, it, the federal funds and state funds that are becoming available to, you know, the, the COVID really highlighted the need for connectivity. And 
I think it demonstrated that wireless has a, uh, a great capacity uh, to connect people in a very timely way. And, you know, I've always said that they're the old Rolling Stones, uh, you know, song about, you know, if, if you work real hard or you try real hard, uh, you may get what you need. And I think we're showing that wireless can, in fact, provide you what you need in an immediate sense. Um, I think I may have told you in the past that we had one carrier that literally in a week, less than uh, less than seven days, stood up over 160 new accounts for households that had no connectivity whatsoever so their kids could go to school. And we had that repeated on several of our uh, carriers throughout the United States. Um, Vermont was a special uh, need because they set it up for the schools and then they shut down the schools. So they extended it uh, literally out to the household. So uh, I, I'm very proud of the, of, the, of, of the industry, especially the small uh, regional carriers. They, uh, uh, they really brought it home that uh, help out their, their, uh, their friends and neighbors and Quite frankly, that's that's what friends and neighbors do for one another. Okay, great. So let's talk a little bit about some of the, so obviously um, you folks have a lot of policy focus at the show. Um, tell us some of the things that are top of mind in DC right now. We have a lot of money going to broadband. Um, and uh, you know we have the emergency broadband benefit that the FCC set up very quickly. Uh, as directed by Congress. Um, we have the FCC also looking at additional spectrum at 3.45 to 3.55. Uh, there's conversations going on around 2.5 gigahertz as well as 12. Um, so what what are you paying attention to these days? Well, all of it, quite frankly. <laughs> you, you can't afford not to. Well, uh, <laughs> just talking about the, you know, the federal funds. I mean, you have 3.2 billion uh, in the first you know, CARES Act roll that out. And then you have the ARA, which is the American Rescue uh, Plan Act. Um, on top of that 3.2, you had another $7.12 billion uh, for broadband. You have the enhanced uh, emergency, uh, what I call an emergency benefit program that the FCC, as you said, very adroitly uh, stood up uh, and it will be implemented, you know, within the 60 days. So <clears throat> that's huge. Uh, following on uh, those additional funds, you have the entire panoply of USF programs. They're, number one, they're being looked at on how do you change, expand, or enhance the delivery of those uh, programs. <clears throat> but they're being infused with a hell of a lot of money right now. So you have the 3.2 followed on by another $7.1 billion. You have another $10 billion being made available in the last COVID bill to states so that they, they could actually create their own broadband program. We had another program set up at NTIA uh, for 300 and around $325 million. And, um, and, and then, you know, traditionally, many of those programs, the USF programs, uh, they go to ETC, eligible telecommunication carriers, you know, um, uh, recipients. <clears throat> the unusual part now is that you don't have to be an ETC to be able to qualify for some of these monies, uh, and quite a lot of it's coming down. And, you know, we haven't even touched on the RUS program. There's billions of dollars over there for that. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, figuring out a way to get through this, uh, you know, uh, sort of maze of potential programs and do it in a way that makes sense uh, is going to be another challenge. And you know, I keep going back to uh, the Data Broadband Act, which we supported and got uh, you know passed late last year in December. And the FCC is now beginning to implement and and to literally create the maps of where broadband is and where broadband is not. And we get that sort of gets to the heart of the 5G fund also. On top of all these programs, you know, you have uh, essentially $9 billion for 5G uh, deployment. And, uh, and then we just finished with the first round of RDOF and we have another round coming. I really hope that all these programs can be informed by the data and information that's going to be created <clears throat> under the Broadband Data Act. So we can uh, 
provide services uh, in a smart way. And we take advantage of all technologies that are out there, not just, I mean, a lot of people look at say, well, access to the internet is the same thing as broadband and the same thing as uh, fiber. Well, it, it, it may be one and all of those things together, but wireless uh, clearly plays a, a role and we need to ensure that all technologies can be sufficiently optimized as we move out uh, in this brand new world here post COVID. So, um, so we're looking forward to that. There's several sessions at the show that will be focusing on COVID and <clears throat> lessons learned from COVID and how it's impacted, you know, the marketing and the services uh, provided through, uh, uh, through all the companies. So um, hopefully there'll be some practical lessons learned and we can share those with our, all of our members. Okay. Do you want to talk about that at all a little bit more, Steve? You know, because it, it's been it's been a crazy year, and people have depended on their networks more than ever. And I think that's being recognized in policy. Um, and it's also, you know, but part of that recognition is also we still have gaps and we know it, and so we're going to try and fill those. But you know, what has this past year been like? Um, you know, for your members, can can you offer us any insights? Well, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's been a wild roller coaster ride for sure, um, because um, you had new technologies emerging in the middle of absolute necessities to expand and enhance your, your network uh, in a way to provide service to all those uh, consumers out there. So, <clears throat> we also have ORAN and ORAN deployment, and uh, how do you successfully uh, integrate some of these new concepts? Or new technologies in your in your network as you try to expand and, and provide new service uh, to the con uh, customers and consumers. Uh, you know that the FCC did the uh, the the challenge, you know, the uh, connectivity challenge, and many of our carriers, <clears throat> almost all of them, took it uh, took that to heart and uh, provided you know uh, unusual service and access to uh, a lot of their, uh, their uh, service territories. And I think we learned a lot from that, but it's, um, you're right, it's been sort of crazy. Everyone wanted uh, uh, connectivity uh, as fast as you want, as much as you can eat yesterday. And, uh, and in the middle of that, we had, you know, real, uh, you know, worker uh, issues, uh, deployment of workers. Um, you know, all of our carriers learned how to, you know, to get PPP, you know, get the, the masks uh, to, you know, retrain the, the employees so that they have, uh, you know, uh, correct hygiene approaches to, um, to uh, their interactions with, uh, with customers. We had many carriers that, uh, for example, uh, many of us rural carriers, you know, had a robust business with people coming in and paying their bills. Uh, on a regular basis. And then many of them had to transfer and trans uh, their transactions to a <clears throat> internet based, uh, you know, credit card slash, uh, you know, uh, e electronic accounts. And, um, and so the industry uh, grew and changed uh, in ways that we had, did, had not really anticipated through this uh, COVID-19. And so it's, it's been a challenge uh, providing the services to the consumer and, uh, you know, almost all of our carriers had to change their network, uh, their provision of their, <clears throat> their, uh, their product and change the, the way they communicate with, uh, with their, uh, with their customers. And that's been, uh, uh, on top of the challenge of the COVID-19, uh, realities that, you know, you have a, uh, an, an emergency situation, you have to also keep people connected, expand the network, uh, and increase the capacity and speeds. Uh, many of our uh, carers were, <clears throat> were lucky enough to, to take advantage of some of the uh, uh, more generous, uh, you know, uh, uh, provisions now at the FCC. They, they, they gave some, you know, generous, uh, uh, waivers so that you could access spectrum and enhance your capabilities. That was, a, that was a real big plus. The FCC came to play on that and many of our carriers were able to, 
provide services to uh, to their customers and to new customers because of it. So yeah, it's very, <clears throat> very, very difficult, but uh, hopefully uh, we've learned a lot from this and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, as the 5G world gets here, uh, I think we've learned how to deploy and how to utilize um, you know, the, the wireless technology um, to, to carry more, uh, you know, more services and greater speeds um, to, to more uh, consumers out there. Okay, great. Well, I recommend that take, people take a look at uh, CCA's website to find out more information about the show. Um, anything else you want us to know, but we're looking forward to hearing from your carrier members. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I would, I was just looking down my list. We have so many things uh, that we're going to be talking about at the at the show. Uh, I think is a is a great opportunity for um, not only uh, existing CCA members and, and vendors and the carriers, but new participants to come in and and uh, get a good cross section of the wireless world, how it's growing, and what the the challenges are uh, immediately, and how wireless fits into the solution for uh, connectivity in this. Uh, you know, brave new world that we're experiencing here. And I think we'll, we will have uh, a lot of new and innovative ideas that will be shown uh, to, you know, to the people that participate. And, you know, we have uh, uh, the, uh, the ORAN companies uh, gravitated to, to CCA in the last, well, seven, eight, nine months. It's almost a year now uh, because this is one of the places that they could get access to uh, to carriers that need their services to provide new and innovative service to all our, uh, their customers. So I hope if you're a customer or a wireless user uh, or someone that wants to be, come join the show, uh, learn a little about the, the wireless world and the challenges that our carriers are experiencing right now and uh, uh, follow uh, RCR and uh, your uh, great reporting as we do that. Great. Well, we will be following you guys and, uh, and hopefully folks will, uh, will join us. So thanks so much, Steve. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself.